Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, audio is not working today on the mic, of course. I don't know why I didn't charge. Um, but we're headed to the gym right now. Same old, same old. It's a nice Monday, doing Monday activities um, like usual. It's always, it's always a great, uh, it's always a great start of the week. Mondays are always, usually, you know, being honest, like my most productive days. Not saying like. Um, all my other days are like you know, wildly different uh, as far as like productivity levels for other days, but um, usually Monday is busy in the sense of there's just a lot of things to do. Now, a lot of people, actually this is what I want to talk about today, is a lot of people confuse um, a lot with uh, output, which um, which is what a lot of the, the uh, I guess, the bigger guys will teach is like volume is what matters. However, um, the volume in the sense of inputs uh, is what matters. Like the like inputs that actually matter. But a lot of people do a lot of things, a lot of activities, but not a lot of input. Uh, so you know, I, I was talking about this before on my channel. Already is really um, you need to focus on activities that actually move the needle in your business. Um, and usually it's not a hundred things. It's usually just one or three things that you have to move. Um, that should be the highest priority at that point in time um, to be done. And um, you know, I'm learning a lot uh, in my journey. And what I realize is complexity really destroys uh, processes that don't need to be complex. They just like really uh, advanced people just do basic shit, a lot of basic shit. It's pretty much what they how they are able to be so quote unquote advanced. They don't do they don't make shit complicated. They just like before, like when they were a salesperson, um, you know, they would, they would, uh, they would provide the utmost value to one customer and over deliver um, on that one customer. And then they, when they start to scale, uh, what happens is people start to overcomplicate shit. And what happens is that level of services uh, start to to kind of diminish, diminish. And what advanced, real advanced people do is that all they do is that they just they just repeat that process a uh, hundred more times um, same level of service just how more times like it's just it's not uh, it, like the dumb people will do or at least the people who think that they're advanced will do is they'll end up creating uh, really overly complex processes uh, for 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 things like this today on our sync up uh, with my team Actually, this was a really nice change because now our team is more than uh, 15 people. Uh, there's three department heads and one COO. So on the meeting, there's about five five people, four or three of them are managers. One of them is your COO, and then one of them is me. I am kind of the the um, ta- the conduit, I guess, of the meeting. Uh, I lead the meeting, and I would kind of strategize from there on what 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 to do. Uh, so. Um, and, and kind of make the high level decisions on, on a couple of things. But well, what's important is that today uh, we talked about um, pretty much the levels of service. So like I talked about, okay, so there's there's five five or so levels of service that exists. At the most basic level, there's it's literally what's called basic, uh, basic service. So I, uh, so the first exercise was what does a three-star experience look like with Airbnb. And you know, people gave out answers of like, yeah, uh, a three-star experience would look like, you know, um, the house wasn't really properly cleaned. Um, you know, there, there was still some trash left over from the previous guests. Uh, the door was left like unlocked. Um, you, you had to like call and, and jump through a couple hoops for to get Wi-Fi. Like you had to pay for Wi-Fi, you had to pay for parking. Like all these things uh, that would re- probably result in even less than a three-star service, but the point of it was to was to kind of describe what does a basic level of service look like, and then what does the second level to that is what does an expected level of service look like? So expected is like you know this is kind of what I expect uh, from from renting out you know uh, a place on on Airbnb. You know the place is clean. Um, you know there's a lockbox on the home. And uh, the Wi-Fi, you know, there's easy access to Wi-Fi. That's kind of just expected. So, and then you you go into desired, which is uh, things that are kind of like not expected, but this is what I want. 
uh, to have. Maybe there's um, extra towels. Maybe there's towels placed in the pool area so you don't have to go back inside while, while you're all wet. Go back inside, get the whole house all dirty or, or wet. You just have the, the towels right there. Or, um, you know, the there would be the maybe the just very simply the um, I guess this is level five, uh, but just just having a booklet of recommended places in the area like that's just desired. You know, it's it's nice. Now, the level above that is is surprising. Uh, so surprising is where uh, you have shit like where the Airbnb host greets you on the phone uh, as soon as you arrive. Um, at, at the place, they, maybe they have a ring doorbell. You know that that they, they get notified when you're there, and they give a quick greeting like "Welcome in," to "Welcome to my place," um, and all, all all things like that. You know, uh, maybe they have the house is pre cooled uh, to 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 uh, a cool temperature. If it's if it's hot weather, uh, if it's cold weather, then it's it's already preheated to a maybe a warmer temperature. Um, maybe the, the maybe there's actual shampoo and there is conditioning and body soap um, in the shower and maybe um, it comes pre-filled with a wine bottle um, and just uh, some basic uh, necessities in the fridge now obviously not everything I talk about here is um, is actually feasible uh, or like realistic. The point of the exercise is to think of all the ways uh, to get to that level of service. So the next level above that is unbelievable. So unbelievable is where you kind of get uh, unrealistic, but the point again of the exercise is to try to be as realistic as possible, uh, but you don't have to stay within the confinements of, of uh, realism. It's just, um, you kind of just, you kind of just blurt out things and then, uh, I mean, as you go on, as you start naming things, uh, things be start becoming more and more feasible. But the whole point, so like, let's just go over unbelievable. So like, the final level or top, top, top tier of service would be like the. Um, there's very, very few companies in the world that actually provide a, an unbelievable level of service. That's why they can charge an unbelievable amount of money. Is because uh, one, people rave about them, and two. Uh, there's there's just people who kind of also expect that level of service uh, with with that amount of money they're charging. So with unbelievable, maybe they pick you up from the airport in an Uber block, um, and they greet you with a sign, and it has your name on it, and then you're greeted with like you're greeted with like a, a you know some sparkling water in the car. Uh, it's already preheat. It's already pre pre cooled, preheated depending on the weather, and then like maybe at the house, they open the door for you, they open the door for the Airbnb before you, um, and like what else, they have uh, a dinner reservation already, you know, reserved, um, they have uh, they have like coupons, um, I mean at that level you probably don't, don't really care about coupons, but it's just the idea of having that uh, is nice, so like you know, maybe have a a you know uh, three contacts that they've gave you, they've given you to call for so and so services. If you need a, a free massage coupon at so and so parlor, like all these things to provide that wow experience, you know. And that and the whole thing about this is that like the house doesn't really change that much. And it's actually, if you think about it, it's actually it would only cost someone probably. Um, 30% more uh, to actually service. However, um, it's going to be a lot more. Uh, it's going to it's going to grant them tenfold of kind of what I guess. If you do provide that, even any anything really above desired is enough to make someone uh, rave about your company. Um, if specifically if you're a service based company, obviously. Uh, but if we we think about this in the real world. Like we talk about maybe, um, you know, we talk about customer service. You know, uh, what would what would be a basic level? Well, a basic level would be you solve tickets, um, and that's just kind of the, the end of that. You know, uh, so you solve tickets, and that's it. Level two would be like you solve tickets with a Loom video, um, and level three would be like you give a really fast response, solve the ticket, and you provide a Loom video. Level four would be like you do all those things, and you follow up on the issue, and then level five, the final and best one would be to um, would be to do all those things and also push their build at build date 
for for um, how how much uh, how long of an inconvenience it has actually caused. So that would be like an unbelievable level of service. It's like, you know, this has caused me an inconvenience. Usually, I don't expect people or the company to actually push my bill date. Uh, but this company did all these things and also pushed my bill date uh, back, you know, you know, three, three, seven days. You know, that may not be a lot, uh, but it, it means the world to the customer because, um, well, actually, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's 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 pretty much like the, the highest level of service I can think of for as far as like how customer service would go is um, fast, really fast response. Loom videos provided walkthroughs. Um, specific for that customer, so it's like personalized. Uh, you know, follow up on that ticket. Um, like follow up if they if they if they're experiencing the issue again. Um, and then you know, like, uh, yeah, all these things, and also plus pushing their bill date back. So this is a really great exercise if you're a service-based company uh, to think about. You know, how can I uh, uh, increase the amount of uh, people that advocate and and refer new people for my for my company because there's a lot of people that stay uh, with with certain companies just because of the level of service um, that they provide. Now, obviously, it's not the the whole entire part of the equation, uh, but it makes up a good good sum. Now, what really makes someone stay is not how expensive something is, is the ratio uh, between how much value they're getting. And the price of the product. So, um, if the value of the product is is lower than the price they're paying, they will churn. If uh, the value of the product is higher, uh, then the customer will not churn. So that's kind of kind of where that that lays. So yeah, uh, pretty much. You know, that's that's really. Uh, Today's topic is, is levels of service. I guess, Oham, if you want to talk about this uh, or put this in the title, is like maybe the five levels of service. I think it's five. Yeah, five. It's basic, um, expected, uh, desired, um, surprising, and then unbelievable is the five levels of service. So uh, I'm headed, I'm pretty much at the gym right now. I'm a little bit late today. Actually, not really late. I'm actually right on time. Uh, but, and yeah, I don't really have much else, uh, but that is the levels of service video talk, whatever. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. If I have something that comes up during my ride back, I'll, I'll talk about it, but as of now, my mind is blank and ready to fucking work out. I actually haven't worked out in the past, like, two or three days. I've been out of town, and that's not an excuse, absolutely, whatsoever. Um... Been a pretty pretty long weekend, uh, but we're, we're getting back after it now. I had some honey, some pink Himalayan salt, and right now, honestly, that has been the best uh, pre-workout I've pre-workout I guess mixture concoction I have found. Um, honey really helps me get that pump and helps me have at least some energy to work out with, um, and then salt helps me with the pump. And then the only only thing. Is you know how am I how am I gonna get my creatine? Cause obviously there's actually not not enough uh, creatine in red meat um, to to actually make a difference. Uh, yes, there's a lot of great benefits to eating red meat. Um, there's, a, there's really everyone you know believes that red meat is uh, for some reason bad for you. There's actually a couple levels to that. So you know everyone's been switching or talking about the carnivore diet recently. For recently in the sense of like a couple 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 of years uh let's see if there's spots here no spots nice take the risk take the risk or lose the chance uh i'm not gonna take the risk today because i just found a parking spot to my right sometimes you can't play you gotta play games that um you know you're gonna win at only play games where you're the house that's fucking hard is only play games that you're the house on there we go see you guys later